We are living in unprecedented times. Bored at home? Nothing to do? Well, let's build something. Your boy Terror has you covered. Welcome to my channel guys. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for new drops and uploads. I will be posting more videos and if you guys want to see something new, let me know in the comments below. We're going to be building this A90 Toyota Supra from Tamiya. It's, it's a 124 scale. Uh, I've been building 124 scale models for I can't even remember how long but ever since I was 13 years old. Um, I've been a fan of the Supra um, for a very, very long time since the Fast and the Furious movies. But um, I built the old Tamiya Supra and now I'm going to build the new A90. Um, I was very excited for this kit. I think this kit got released what back in um, late December, early January. Um, we're going to be using the Pandem White Body Kit from Fugu Garage. Thanks to our friends at Fugu for sending this kit over. There's going to be a lot of work that needs to be done to this. Um, it is a resin aftermarket kit. So let's get to it. I'm using 3M Pro Grade Precision sanding um, papers. You can actually get these at any local uh, hardware store. Um, the reason I use automotive grade instead of a hobby tool. Um, I just like to use what the professionals use, to be honest. Um, you can't go wrong with anything that auto body and professional shops use. Um, there's nothing wrong with the hobby grade stuff. Um, it's all similar and, and it is the same, but uh, I just like to use what the, the professionals like to use in real cars. Um, just go ahead and I'm sanding the whole body down um, with 400 grit. I usually start off with something very low, um, just kind of give it a light scuff nothing too deep what I like to do is I like to uh, mock up aftermarket any aftermarket piece to for what it's intended for I like to just mock it up and make sure that it's a, an actual correct fitment a lot of these times these aftermarket pieces are uh, have a little too much resin or they have extra unnecessary flash so what you can do is just sand them down with any um, sanding stick. Uh, here I'm using squadron tools. It is the coarse sanding stick. And, and then I just kind of follow it up with a 400 grit. Um, and just kind of smooth it out, smooth out the edges. And I go back and forth and I add and, and test fit the part just to make sure that I'm getting a correct fit. Um, a lot of the times they don't fit. So that is your job to go in there and make sure that they are fitting correctly. On this kit, I actually removed the, um, it didn't come with the uh, open air rear vent on the rear uh, over fenders. Um, on the real Pandem kit, if you notice, um, you gotta look at the real kit. It actually, it is open air. Um, I went ahead and removed it just so I can replicate the same details as the real kit. Um, so yeah, there is a little bit of customization that goes on. Um, a lot of the times they don't, uh, provide those for you but you know for the price and sometimes they're uh, very affordable um, you get uh, what you pay for so uh, I went ahead and uh, also uh, drilled out the holes for the, for rivets I will be installing rivets uh, I will show that in a later video so if you stick around you'll be able to see how I do that and where I get my rivets from Oh, I love this grip on knife from Excel. You can get this knife at like, your local Hobby Lobby or any hobby store. It's probably one of the best knives that I've used um, so many times that um, it saved me from not cutting myself just because it has that extra grip is what you need. Just try to you know avoid the standard normal ones. The ones that are really cheap, like two, a dollar, two, three dollars. Uh, I believe this one's like $8.99, uh, 10 bucks, something like that. Um, but yeah, try to buy those, uh, avoid those cheap ones. They just don't work really well. Um, they do slip and fall and they do, uh, will cause some sort of injury. So you wanna kind of stay away from those cheap tools. I'm just doing more sanding here and just, you know, making sure that everything fits right. Um, 
and then what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and attach it to the body, align it, and make sure that it is uh, aligning perfectly. And I'll just go back and forth with the rest of the pieces. Um, you know, I'll get the front, the side skirt, and the rear, and I just try, just try to mock it up together, just make sure it's looking proper and the fitment is there. Uh, the last thing that you want is you don't want a kit that looks lopsided uh, towards the end of your build. So you got, just got to make sure you look at those um, and cover your ends there. And what I like to do is I actually like to go online and just kind of compare the kit. So, you know, do that. Make a list of the parts that you're working with. Uh, do a real real to real uh, comparison with the actual parts that you're using um, I look at this kit for example you know the real panning kit I look at the real cars the people who've actually used the kit already on the real car so and I try to mimic that you know I try to mock that and and put it on a uh, smaller scale uh, like this one so I try to get the uh, the most accurate details as possible So I'm just sanding the inside. It's, it's always a good practice just to kind of sand um, and just get nice smooth details. Make sure there's no overflash. Um, there's no extra resin uh, pieces that are not supposed to be there. Um, and I just kind of look around and make sure I get all the little pieces uh, taken care of. And just don't be afraid to, you know, just use your tools, chip away um, and just kind of if you feel like the, it just doesn't look right, just go ahead and just kind of smooth it out, sand it, and make it as accurate as possible. I'm using one of my favorite tools. I use this tool a lot. It is a Chicago Electric Cordless it's a rotary tool. You can use pretty much any rotary tool. Uh, this one I picked up at Harbor Freight uh, for around $30. So it's actually a really cool tool. I used to um, use Dremel uh, a while back and it just kind of burnt out. So uh, for the next one, I said, hey, I'll just try this um, uh, cordless from Harbor Freight. And Harbor Freight's got some pretty decent tools there. So. And so far, so good. I've had it for over a year and hasn't um, gone bad on me. Uh, guys, Super Gold Plus by BSI is probably one of the best glues that you can use. Uh, I use pretty much all their products from the Instacure, Instaset, um, MaxiCures, all that. Uh, a lot of that stuff is great and it's powerful, but... For what we're doing here is, um, you know, it just kind of counteracts with uh, the plastics and it does fog it up from time to time. So um, if you do need to use it, just use very minimal amounts of the regular cyanocrylic glue. Uh, but from ever since I uh, started using the high end um, expensive bottles of the Super Gold Plus, uh, I just never look back from there. Um, it's a really, really great product. It does not destroy any of my pieces, especially on Photo Etch. Um, it doesn't fog anything up. And I just noticed the quality and craftsmanship of my work has just improved over time. So with this glue, it actually helps out with, um, you know, getting the bond that you need, a, a good strong bond, but at the same time, not ruining your work. So um, you're actually satisfied uh, when you're done putting your pieces together. The front fender flares, um, it should align with the body lines of the uh, stock fender. You don't have to cut off the fenders or anything like that. Um, here I'm using the BSI Instascent. It's actually it's their accelerator. So basically, what it does, it just accelerates the drying time on the um, Super Gold. Uh, definitely have to have one of those in your stash or in your uh, tools department. It's a really good tool to have. Um, it cuts my drying time in half. Um, instead of just holding pieces there for minutes on end. Uh, the accelerator just speeds that up for you and um, you get to just you know work on other areas of your project
I like to just make sure that all the pieces are just fitting correctly. I, I look at it several times. I go back and forth and I just got to make sure that everything is looking proper. Uh, don't be afraid to take some time and just kind of, you know, take your time with it and just make sure that everything's fitting correctly. I look at all edges, all corners, make sure they actually all are aligning with the uh, fenders on your car. So, um, So it's looking pretty good right here. Uh, I think the fitment in the front is looking pretty, pretty um, strong. It looks like it's aligning right. So I just go ahead and make sure that you know you look at it at different angles from you know you get your top view, side view, and your bottom view just to, just to see that it, it it actually is aligning correctly. I went ahead and I'm just adding my side skirt now just to make sure that it is aligning with the front fender. I don't know you can see, but there's the actual holes on the side skirts. Um, you can probably see them. Um, there is 62 holes in the Pandem wide body kit. So that means I do need 62 rivets. Isn't that crazy? Now it's not necessary for you to do this. Um, you know, you can pretty much build and play right out of the box, but I'm going the extra mile to get the detail that I see and I like. Um, these are the details that I strive for. This is what I like to look at. Um, and I just go all out and just, you know, put all my work, hard work and effort into it. So that's, and I'm satisfied at the end of the day, so. Now I'm just installing the rear fender. It looks like I went ahead and added some uh, more glue. Um, now, be very generous, but don't add a lot of glue to your parts. Um, you don't really need that much necessarily. Uh, what I like to do is I just like to do like little droplets um, and I just kind of uh, spread them apart. Um, like if you do add a lot, I mean, then it turns into a glue bomb and it's something that you don't want. I'm just adding a little bit more just to reinforce uh, the fenders. I'm adding a little bit uh, to the bottom side of the side skirt. So where I put the aftermarket side skirt on top, um, you know, the glue is there. So all I have to do is just kind of hold it in place. Looking just pretty right on point here. And it looks like it's aligning a little bit just the way I wanted it. Now, if you do get um, glue that kind of just uh, goes over or just kind of like it's messy, it starts to look like a messy, don't worry about it. You can actually come back and sand some of the glue residue that's been um, kind of pushed around. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, I'm adding a little bit more of the accelerator. This just holds it in place quicker and faster so I can move on to the next step. You can see I have a little bit of glue residue on my front fender, so I will go ahead and, and go back there and sand it with my 400 grit. The accelerator is kind of, it's very watery, so it will uh, run all over your body. Don't worry about that. It's not going to ruin your body or your uh, resin pieces. Uh, that you can actually just clean up with a cloth. Just inspecting the fitment here on the rear quarter panels, just making sure that uh, it is aligning right. Um, you can see the cutout vent there, um, but I will be making the also, uh, I'm gonna be making another cut into the rear bumper so it is also open. Make sure they, uh, it aligns right. Um, it, al it aligns flush with the door lines and the door jams. Another thing, for some reason, um, to me, I had the door, one of the door pieces as an added extra option uh, uh, step. So I'm not sure um, what the deal with that is, but yeah, I guess it's a part of the door. Make sure you add those first 
um, I, I just realized that I had to add those first instead of doing it after just cause so it gives you a visual of what it's going to look like with all the fenders attached to it. I'm cutting out the rear bumper. I'm making that extra vent um, for my uh, rear quarter panel fender. So um, I think this is a really good look. Um, depending on what kind of wheels and tires you're going to use, um, the wheels are definitely going to look more aggressive and you will see the tire pattern. I really like that look where you can see the, the, the insides of the uh, and how wide your, your actual wheels are. And you can see, you can kind of see right through it there. So it's looking pretty good. And I can see my fingers right through it. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the duckbill on, on the trunk. So just making sure that it is at also aligning together. Making sure the whole clip just pretty much flows on one side. So from the front fenders to the side skirts and the rear over fenders now my kit is a little um, there there is gonna be some gaps uh, in between so if you do see gaps that should not be a problem um, a lot of people don't know this but you can actually use um, any kind of putty to fill those in and then uh, on my kit I actually had a few gaps and so what I like to do is I just like to fill them in with uh, putty to me it actually has a really good putty that I like to use uh, it dries within a, I think within 30 minutes so it's not that bad just checking for fitment here making sure everything is looking a-okay I'm gonna sand a little bit more. I'm gonna sand the inner, um, the inner fenders. Uh, I'll sand the, which is right where the wheels are gonna go. Um, if you notice, a lot of my builds are are very aggressive and very low to the ground. So a lot of that is in regards to what kind of work that you do to it to get it ready, to get it to that, to give it that stance. So um, what I do is I like to just kind of um, shave a little bit more than necessary just so I can fit bigger wheels under the fenders. So what I'm gonna do here is just kind of shave a little bit off of the rear quarter panel and make room. So I'm not quite too sure yet what kind of wheels I'm gonna go with, but I do wanna do something like an aggressive uh, wheel package, um, but we'll see. Uh, maybe in the next video I'll show um, and maybe you guys can help me out what kind of wheels I should use for the Super. You don't have to trim too much from this, but just enough to uh, get some wheel clearance. Just take your time, don't rush it. Uh, make sure it, it, it is lining, um, it, it's looking proper. Um, what I like to do is just kind of remove the flash and then I go back at it with, sometimes I do three, three, 320 grit and then I just, just to get it nice and smooth and just remove it a little bit quicker. And then I just top it off with the 400. And I think I'm using uh, 320 here just to remove any extra rough uh, patches of uh, just uh, burnt out plastic. And just kind of do the inside too, you know, just make sure that the inside's nice and clean. Uh, it's not gonna affect anything else. And, and, and also when you do lay your paint on top, it, the, you don't have any extra uh, burnt plastic pieces just getting stuck in your paint jobs. Just double check. I like to just triple check. Um, this is a rule of thumb for me. I just double and triple check uh, my work. Uh, a lot of times these pieces don't fit uh, accurately, so I like to just bend them a little. Um, you could also do this in warm water, just dip any uh, resin part in warm water and then just leave it for, I would say, what, like about a minute or so, and then you can take it out and they're, not, they're soft. And uh, um, so they're actually more uh, easy to bend and just kind of conform to your surface. 
So here I just bend it a little bit just so I get a more, uh, it, it, it aligns with the body lines. And I'm just gonna add uh, some uh, super gold to every corner, uh, pretty much from the top all the way to the bottom. And just a little bit more right there. And just hold it very carefully and place it against the rear quarter panel. And make sure your lines kind of match up. Or I should say they should pro they should match up correctly. So it's looking a little lopsided for me. Uh, I'm just making sure that you know I'm getting the correct position for this. Um, even though there might be a little bit of gap where the side skirt and the lower uh, rear fender connect. Uh, that's okay because I'm gonna come back to this and fix this issue and I'll show you how I'm gonna be adding a little bit more accelerator just to speed up the process Just hold it in place, you know for a couple seconds It doesn't have to be that very long, but it will do its job and it'll dry up very quickly You guys are gonna love the accelerator. It does wonders for me. Now I'm adding the duck bill. It's looking like it's all drying up now. It's starting to look like a pandem, like a pandem super, right? It almost looks like the real deal. Come on. So just make sure it uh, on the rear tail lights. You know, it aligns with the rear rear tail light assembly there uh, and the rear bumper. And that's what I'm checking for here for any mistakes, any errors, and just making sure that the kit actually flows from the from the beginning of the front fender all the way to the back. I like to uh, do like a little light scuff with the 400 grit. Um, a lot of the times, um, it won't. It won't, it, you'll see like openings or gaps in between. Um, and I just kind of like to kind of bend those, like smooth those down with sanding, with sanding it. Um, and basically what it does, it just kind of points it in that direction where it points it into the fender instead of flaring out. And I just light scuff it. I just go back and forth, just making sure if there's anything that looks weird or it's just kind of flaring out to the in the opposite direction, I kind of re redirect and point it back into it. So it looks it looks flush and it looks like it's part of the fender. It's looking pretty good. I mean, not bad, not bad so far. It's looking pretty nice. Now I'm wondering what color I should use for this kit. Um, I've, I have several ideas that popped up, but I'm qu still quite not sure. I'm not set dead on the color that could be next on the next episode. I think I'm gonna prime it uh, prime it up first to see how we're doing and then we'll decide on what kind of color But if you guys have a color in mind, please let me know in the comments below. Let me know what color um, You guys would like to see or if there's a specific color that you don't know how to apply Let me know in the comments below and then we'll cover that in the next episode Guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be uploading new drops, new content, uh, future builds, anything else that you guys wanna see, please let me know. Um, on the next episode, like I said, we're gonna get the body primed and ready to go for paint. See ya.